Man, I haven't seen Arlo in forever. What happened last time I didn't see him in a long time? Oh! No, 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 no! No, 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 In this video, guys, we're going to be talking about the reasons why your Doberman might be destroying your backyard, which is critical for understanding your dog and having any chance of fixing this behavior on any kind of long-term basis. And then we're going to talk about how you actually go about changing their behavior and their habits so that you no longer have to worry about your dog digging up and destroying your backyard. Real quick guys, before we jump into this, keep in mind this video is about fixing this problem on a long-term basis, really retraining your dog's behaviors. Whereas a previous video I did a while back was all about temporary solutions you can use to stop this behavior right now and buy yourself a little bit of time while you retrain your dog. So if you just need this behavior to stop like immediately, you need to go watch the other video. It should be popping up in the corner of your screen, but I'll also link to it down in the description below. Go apply one, at least one or two of those temporary solutions to this problem, then come back here and we'll talk all about training this out of your dog in the long haul. First up, let's talk about why your Doberman might be digging up and destroying your yard. Now, I might be repeating a couple things from the last video, but this is just so critical to understand, and I'll try and throw in some more examples so you get a better understanding of each one of these than I did previously. Um, but if you don't understand the cause as to why your dog is digging up your yard, you're not gonna be able to figure out any kind of solution. But as soon as you understand that cause from the solutions I provide you, it's gonna be really clear how you need to approach it with your specific dog. Understand the cause, then you'll be able to figure out the solution. So let's jump straight into that. Number one, lack of exercise and mental stimulation. Dobermans are a working breed and they're the fifth smartest dog breed in the world. So they have tons of energy and they just want to engage their brain and use it and think things through. If you're not providing maybe some training sessions or some interactive toys or um, the exercise they need, it's very common for them to be digging up their yard. Number two, stress and anxiety. Really anything that could heighten the anxiety level in your dog could lead to digging, such as new ownership, uh, change in uh, environment or home, or just you being gone. Uh, maybe it's a cold day and they're cold, or it's a hot day and they're too hot. They can't lay down, there's no shade. These are all things that can heighten the stress and the anxiety in your dog and lead to a potential digging problem. Now, another potential reason they might be digging up your yard is just simply for fun. A bored Doberman will just want to have some fun and digging down is a great way to do that. They dig down, they smell new smells, they find a root or two to chew on, they see new cool things. Um, they might just be digging up your yard for something to do for fun. Number four, to hunt. Dobermans are high prey drive dogs and they follow bugs, they follow rodents, gophers, that type of thing. They can hear extremely well, so they can even hear them below the surface. If your dog is digging in lines in your backyard, then that's a good sign that they're trying to hunt or follow something. Um, if they're digging straight holes, then this is most likely not the cause. Number five, to escape. Now, Dobermans aren't known to be big escape artists at all. They usually like staying put, but there are some reasons why they might try and dig on a fence, for example, to escape. One of them is to find a companion. Non-spayed and non-neuter dogs are known for this. They have this instinct to roam. Um, also to go and try and find their owner when they're left home alone. Uh, if they hear another dog on the other side of the fence, they're trying to get to that dog. There's a lot of reasons they might try to escape dig. If they're escape digging, you'll know this because there'll be holes around the fence line um, or wherever they're contained. Whereas if it's for some of these other reasons, more often than not, it's in the middle of your yard. Number six is just genetics. Some dogs are just genetically more inclined to dig than other dogs. Um, one great example is that terriers in general are known for being big diggers and really the Dobermans are descended from the Black and Tan Terrier, which is now extinct, and the Manchester Terrier. So um, there's a good reason why they might have some of that digging instinct in their genetics. Okay, so the first step is to stop this behavior on the short-term basis. You need to stop it now because it's destroying your yard and the more they do it, the more they're gonna keep doing it. So um, if you haven't already, check out that video I mentioned. It'll be linked to in the description down below all about how to stop digging on a short-term basis. There's some really cool tips and tricks in there, guys, that will just stop this like right away, um, like on a dime. And you stop it on a dime, even if it's temporary, and then we can address the permanent solutions, which we're gonna jump into right now. Okay, so now hopefully you stop the digging. 
you can take a little bit of a breather and we can gather our thoughts here. Um, this is going to be how I go about training this behavior out of my dog and other dogs that I work with. And you know, there are many ways to approach it and many things can work, but this is what I found to work the best for me to address this on a long-term basis. Stack as many of these cards that you can get in your favor as humanly possible here, guys. Why not have every advantage you can get? Number one, reduce the stress as much as possible. If you've recently had a change with your dog in environment or something like that, ease that transition by spending more time with your dog. Maybe if it's a new sleeping area because it's a new house, recreate their old sleeping area as closely as you can. Make sure they have a soft place to lay down in the backyard, that they don't get too cold or too hot, that they have room to stretch their legs and plenty of water and some entertaining things to keep them entertained. These are things you can do to reduce the stress levels. And the more you reduce the stress levels, the more you, uh, take away that need for them to release the stress by digging up your yard, which is such a common release for these Dobermans. Number two, more exercise and mental stimulation throughout the day. Guys, these dogs need on average one to two hours of exercise every single day, but some dogs need more. So whatever you're doing now, if your dog's still digging up the yard, throw in one more segment into your daily routine. Just fit it in your daily routine, Say, okay, I'm gonna just throw in an extra 10 minutes of fetch in the morning, every single morning. Or I'm gonna throw in an extra walk in the evening, every single evening. Just up their exercise in their daily routine just a little bit more than you're used to. And that can make a big difference. Also mentally stimulate them a little bit more. Have one more session of command training throughout the day. Okay, I'm gonna do 10 minutes in the afternoon of command training on my lunch break, for example. Um, just throw in a little more exercise, a little more mental stimulation into the daily routine, and that'll lower their overall stress level, which will reduce the need to have that outlet, which is to dig. Number three, remove triggers. Basically just remove as many triggers as possible that seem to set off your dog and cause the digging in the first place. If your dog is digging in lines and it looks like maybe they're chasing something under the ground like bugs or a rodent, call an exterminator and get that handled. If your dog is trying to get to another dog on the other fence and they're digging along the fence, try maybe erecting a small offset to offset them from the fence a little bit. Um, if it's the pool guy coming over that seems to up their anxiety level and they start digging to get toward to the pool guy, try changing the day that your pool guy comes or the time or some to a time when you can pull your dog inside the house, for example. Um, remove as many triggers as humanly possible, which will give you a little bit of breathing room mentally in the dog to allow you to then get in there and change the behavior and really work with the training. But you gotta buy yourself that breathing room by removing as many triggers as possible. Okay, so now that you have as many cards stacked in your favor as humanly possible with this digging thing, you can move on to actually breaking your dog of this digging habit. Number one, supervise. You gotta supervise a lot more often, and this is it, guys. This is where most people fail. This is the people that you see posting on forums that say, oh, I got a digging problem and I just can't break my dog of it. These are the people because they're not willing to take this step serious. You gotta put in lots of extra supervision. I know you just started to let them have more freedom and it's awesome because you can relax a little bit, but guess what? It's going south, they're starting to dig. You need to hover and supervise a little bit more. Whatever you did when they were puppies, start doing that again and dial it back. It's only gonna be temporary, I promise you, but you gotta catch the dog in the act of digging or starting to dig, like sniffing a hole where they've dug before, for example, in order to have any prayer of correcting the behavior. Um, you're not gonna correct a negative behavior like this that they only do while you're gone and you never see it and you can never correct it. Um, I've told you before that Dobermans love habit and they that is great for command training. That habit in the dog, uh, that desire to have that habit and that routine helps you so much with training commands. It's a huge negative when it comes to uh, preventing unwanted behaviors because the more they do the behavior, the more that'll become a habit for them. So by you supervising more is gonna mean that you're gonna be able to redirect them more, which means you're gonna develop a new habit in place of that old negative habit of destroying your yard and digging it up. Number two, communicate. Okay, so now you're supervising your dog heavily. You see them start to sniff an area where they've dug before or start to paw at the ground or dig at it. For example, you've caught them in the act. Great, this is a golden opportunity. This is where you can make a difference. You've caught them in the act, that's the hard part. Now you need to communicate with them. You can give them a command like no or leave it or depending on how the dog is trained. Um, use a command that they know, uh, but you have to keep no. this communication open. A leave lot of people it. go straight to the redirection stage, which will be the next step, but, but go straight to that without the communication with the Doberman and that is horrible and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but Dobermans are superhuman focused, focused on their owners. They love that communication. They just wanna know what's expected of them. So catch them starting the act or in the act and communicate with them clearly what you expect. 
Number three, redirect. Now, you've caught your dog in the act, which is a tough spot. You've communicated clearly with your dog what you expect, and then and only then should you go on to the redirection stage. Um, now, this is also where a lot of people mess up. A lot of people go straight to the redirection without any of that communication. And if you do that, um, best case scenario, you're really dragging out this thing of breaking the habit for a really long time. Worst case scenario, you're actually reinforcing the negative habit of digging up your backyard. Think about it. You're a Doberman. You're the fifth smartest dog breed in the world. You're great at figuring out your owner and you're great at outsmarting your owner. And you start to realize, hey, when I dig in this spot or when I grab this irrigation system and yank on it or where I pull up mom's plants, she comes running out with a treat when I haven't seen her all day and gives it to me. Or she'll come running out with a toy and engage with me. Redirection without those previous steps is of no good to you. So make sure those other steps have been checked off and then go into redirection. So as an example, if I catch Arlo digging up the backyard, I'll say something like, no, leave it. And uh, then it's clear what I want. Then I'll redirect him by oh, grabbing no. a toy, engaging leave him it. with one of our favorite uh, games to do together and uh, get him focused on that. These are dogs of habit. So the more that you take them away from that digging habit, kind of cancel that out and bring them over to the uh, toy and do that game that you like to do, the more that digging will be foreign to them and the more it'll be kind of routine for them to grab a toy and engage there. So remember guys, supervise, communicate, and redirect. This is a formula that's used successfully very often with dogs to train all types of behaviors, but it fits in perfectly with correcting this digging behaviors in the Doberman. I do wanna give you guys one last resort option as well. Another option is to give your dog a good place to dig, um, like a sandbox that they dig in or designated area where your dog can clearly tell this is an okay area for me to dig and redirect them there. I've personally never used that technique, but a lot of doorman owners have had success with that apparently. Uh, they'll use sand or dirt or mix sand and dirt to get a nice texture that the dog likes to dig in, or they'll use some of those plastic kiddie pools and fill that up with some substance for them to dig in. Um, They've used that with great uh, success, apparently, from time to time. Um, other doberman owners, I never have, so um, you know I can't recommend it myself, but I do want to communicate all the techniques that I know of just so you guys have all the tools possible. And lastly, guys, if you're pulling your hair out because of this digging issue and you don't know what to do and your dog is under two years of age, I do want to give you a little bit of hope. This is a really common issue when your dog is really young. It's part of the exploring process, figuring out their environment for a young pup. After two years of age, you can expect the um, digging problem to subside substantially. Um, just make sure you're on top of this training, but I do want to give hope specifically for you out there with young Dobermans. If you found this at all helpful, guys, and you're excited to tackle, well, excited may not be the exact word, but maybe you're feeling more prepared to tackle this um, should this come up with your dog, then definitely scroll down, hit the like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you enjoy learning about the Doberman breed in general, or you also just maybe want some training tips for your dog, if I have already successfully convinced you to get a Doberman, then definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. That way you won't miss any of my future videos. And guys, keep being great Doberman breed ambassadors and spreading the word about this amazing dog. I'll see you next time.